What's up guys, my name is Chris and today I'm showing you guys how to use EV Synth. Now I've already done a couple tutorials of how to actually use EV Synth, but I wanted to go into nitty gritty and the little details of how each of these settings work within EV Synth, like demapping, flicker, and all these other little things. So, with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna to go to the EV Synth website. We're going to click download from there, and I'll have a link to this down in the description below. Go ahead and click save. All right, and I already have a copy of that on my desktop. So what we're gonna do is we're going to right click, extract all, click yes, and then open that folder because this is where it's gonna get a lot of fun. Go ahead and open EVSynth. It's gonna pop up with a, this might be a malicious program. Just click run anyway, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, and after EVSynth is open, here is the software. It has a couple different things here. We have keyframes, video, mask. You can click advanced, it has mapping, deflicker, diversity, and this nice little section down here with the stops and keyframes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to use the sample project first, and then after that, I'm gonna go through, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to get your own videos out of this, because pretty much every tutorial I've put out has told you guys how to do that, so. Let's just get into this nitty gritty first. Within the sample project, there's two folders, keys and video. Now the video has 100 keyframes and in a PNG sequence of this length looking forward then looking to the side. And if you look in there, there's all 100 frames in there. And what you can do over here is if you go to the sample project, go to keys, you'll see those keyframes 100, sorry. You'll see those keyframes 000 and 099. If you click it, they're actually two different photos. They look the same, but one of them has been painted over and the other one isn't, hasn't, whatever it is. So that being said, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that. You can go ahead and edit the key if you want. You can go ahead and take, take those and edit them however you want. But just for illustration here, we're just gonna drag it as it is. We're gonna drag keys over like that. And we're gonna drag video over like that. And here's where it gets a little more fun. You have all these different settings right here. Mapping, deflicker, diversity, weight, and then the keyframes all over here. And you can tweak each of those to do something different. I'm gonna show you the effects of what each of those do later in the video. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna add an extra keyframe by clicking that plus arrow. And we're going to name those what those keyframes were. So we had 00, zero and then 99. So it just defaulted that to zero. And these stops are literally just the stop of when it stops. How many more times can I say stop in this? So that first one, obviously it's not gonna go past zero. Then we can add another zero right there and it's not gonna go past 99. You can't go past 99. What you could do is you could do this where it goes to 35 and then 35. So it ends up stops at the exact same frame but we don't really want that because we want to make sure that we have as much data we can work with to blend these later on. So from there, we're gonna to go to this output folder. It's always going to output to the same folder that your keys and your video are in. So with that, we can go ahead and name this one output dash zero and go ahead and name these the exact same thing. So out dash 99 backslash bracket pound, 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 close bracket dot png and i thought i hated coding before but with that being said that's literally all you have to do for most ev synth effects and with your default settings just go ahead and click run all right there you can choose each one of those so you can run individually but you know we're not going to do that right now all right whenever you're done exporting it should give you a folder that looks something like this now every one of the video frames just in the style of the keyframe going through the entire thing now I went through and did this in a Vincent Van Gogh effect so I can show you guys exactly how this looks with different styles and kind of just what it can do. For that being said, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to open Premiere Pro and just import all of this. Okay, now go ahead and set your Premiere Pro timeline up like you normally would, just like whatever settings you typically use, just go ahead and use those. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day because after you have all your folders imported, it's gonna look something like this. Or what you're gonna do is you just wanna click the folder yourself. So let's just go with video. You're gonna click this little button down here that's automate the sequence. Click that and it's gonna pop up this new window. Now everybody's little automated sequence thing might be a little different, but what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna make sure that it's overwrite edit, clip overlap 30 frames, and instead of saying use in and out range, use frames per still, it should be defaulted to 30, but go ahead and just change that to one frame because this is essentially doing one frame for every single photo and then click okay. And it's gonna automatically import the entire thing. Uh, go ahead and select all. Nest, and since I typically use a 4K folder, we're going to roll this up to 400% increase. And bada bing, bada boom. We have our EV synth links right there. So from there, I've actually already EV synth this all the way through with all the different settings being tweaked and stuff like that. But I use the Vincent Van Gogh Starry Night effect just to kind of highlight and accentuate the details and all the little changes that it makes. So that being said, here is the original version of the Vincent Van Gogh effect, which is a little jittery, has some little bugs here and there. But then from there, we're also gonna show this one where I changed the diversity from 3,500, the default, to 500. Then I had this one where I changed the diversity to 6,500. Then I changed the flicker down to zero. Then I changed the flicker up to one. 
which I personally think is the absolute best way that this looks no matter what, like no matter what I've done. Flicker at one or two makes everything just look so much better. If there are other fringe cases where this is not the case, please let me know because I absolutely love this and I've been applying it to every EV synth that I've been doing since I found this out. Now this next one is where I flip the weights. Now by default it has the keyframe weight set to one and the video weight set to four. Well I flipped it, I did the keyframe weight set to four and the video weight set to one and it just looks, it looks bad guys. It just looks choppy, crazy and it looks, uh, it looks worse than that LSD video I did. So let's, let's avoid that one. All right, the next one I did was mapping. I changed the mapping for this one down to one versus 10. And then there's the mapping up to a 20, which I think follows it a little bit closer. So I'm kind of curious to see what it does when in conjunction with some other looks and different effects and stuff like that. That's the different settings, what happens whenever you flip them, double them, and just like subtract them. Each of these effects can be used in their own different ways and they, I'm sure each of them have a specific use that can be used better in one way or another. But from what I've seen, my personal favorite is Flickr, just turning that one up to like a one or a two versus a 0 0.5, which I think made it a little too jittery, but having it on a one made it so smooth and it was so nice. I absolutely loved that. And then mapping, it helps you keep it a little bit more honed in, I do assume. And diversity, I actually don't know what that actually does. So if you guys notice anything, just let me know in the comments down below because I genuinely couldn't tell the difference between those two. But with that being said, that's typically how you use EB Synth. Now I'm actually gonna jump into After Effects to show you guys how to get your PNG sequence. That way you guys can actually make your own EB Synth videos. So with that being said, let's get into After Effects. All right, so now we're in After Effects. We have our video already put into our composition. That's all you really have to do is just get your video how you want it in After Effects. And then you're gonna to wanna to narrow it down. Narrow down the clip that you're actually wanting to use. So let's say we want this small section right here because if you're not using that section if you don't need those keyframes don't use them because they're just going to pull up a lot more ram a lot more uh, power from your computer than you actually want to use so only really use the sections that you know you're going to need so if you need this one scene in this one section use that one scene in this one section don't use the entire thing around it because it's just going to make it a lot more difficult on you guys and make a lot longer render time so with that being said this little micro section in the middle here Let's bring it down a little bit shorter too, because that's like three seconds. From there, you're gonna export. So Control M or Command M for your Mac users. And down here, where it says Output Module, click that, change it from Lossless AVI to PNG Sequence. You don't have to change anything else. It's gonna change your output's file name to .png with this nice little bracket and the pound symbols in the middle of it. That's gonna make sure that everything's sequential, because you want your zero, one, two, three, fours to all line up with that one you don't want keyframe one, seven, four, 12, five. You don't want them all jumbled up in there. You want them one after another. So keeping those in there makes it a lot easier. And I will recommend making a specific folder for this because this can get very out of hand, very fast. Keep the folder separate. That is the biggest piece of advice I have for you guys. And just go ahead and click save and export. It's gonna take an extra second, but with it just being PNG images, every second or every little frame that it renders should actually just be exported out in your folder. And I think that's everything on how to make an EV synth with this stuff. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button down below, it really helps me out. And right above me, there should be a playlist of other EV synth tutorials. And to the left here, there should be a video that YouTube is saying you guys are going to enjoy. I don't know what that's gonna be, so good luck with that. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out guys.